OK, today, we're gonna look at how to calculate the IG. RF and the way that I do it is using a database. So I have my database open, and then I go to GX. Load menu, and I scroll down to IGRF. You can see this menu loads at the top. And so I'm gonna create an IGRF channel. I click on it. I select IGRF Auto. You can scroll down to the year. I usually leave it on Auto. Survey date. You have to know the date your survey was collected. So this answer, there was clicks in 2015 and in March. Sometimes it's fishy for the South African. Regional grid. You're not 100% sure when it was connected. So you just do the closest approximation. And I know a lot of those were collected in 1970. 1980 so I put 1980 01. 01 and no that's not 100% accurate. But it's the best we can do. We choose a longitude channel. So for in my case my longitude channel is X. Latitude channel is Y. If you don't have these, maybe your coordinates are just an X. Like in UTM, you H so in X and Y and meters. Then you would actually have to go and check out my video on how to convert coordinates. And you have to convert those to latitude and longitude. You'd have to get an innovation a channel. So mine is the Z channel here. You can see it on the right inside. These are very high innovations causets. I'm in the SU2. Again, if you don't have a Z channel, you actually gonna have to go download topography data. And so go check out my video on the Seeker. Using Seeker to download topography data. And then you gonna have to sample this channel to bring it in. And then after channel. These you gonna create these channels that don't exist. You gonna create them, so I just put total field as TF. And you maybe wanna put your point IG. RF so that you know what it is. IGRF inclination. And IGRF dick. OK, and I click OK. And it says year 2015 not found, click OK. So that's a problem with um. With a this juice off that I'm running. You am maybe it's a problem in general with yourself. I'm not 100% sure. But let's see if it's calculated. So it hasn't calculated anything. So that's actually gonna. Then be an inaccuracy that I have. I think then, it probably only goes up to 2010 so if. I say that the survey was dotted 2010, they'd see. But calculate that. And longer to bend you to greases. I don't care, but obviously. Selected something wrong here, let's do it again. Oh my god, oh my god. 
I can let me just double check. What's wrong with my X column? Let's try again, IGRF let's try 2010. No longer tooth and my latitude columns. Let's select them again, click OK. I've obviously got a large venue somewhere. So the easiest way to double check. Why you getting this is to plot it up. So let's go here. And go show profile. And so what I've done here is I've taken my longitude values and I'm plotting that. And here I'm gonna click on the next blank space at the bottom. Click on my latitude values and say show profile. And so you can see that all of those values seem about right. But you can see I've got several lines here. So let's go through all of them. Where this is the new sweet large baby. And see what you do anyway. Okay, I think I figured out what the problem is. A my X and my Y are designated as being these channels here, which are actually UT, M, and they're in meters. So even though I've told them what longitude and attitude columns to use, maybe it's getting confused because I haven't designated them, and it's X is Y. So let's do the coordinates. Set coordinates. And I'm changing it to longer to and that. The tube and click OK. Let's see if it works now. OK. OK, it seems to have worked. Even though I told it, which was long left, it seems that they needed it to be designated as the X of my columns. So you can see here is my IGRF. And here's the inclination. And here's the declination. OK, so you could now grid up this idea. If let's see what it looks like. And then we have curvature. IGITF call it something that you gonna remember it. So IGRFTF. Um. I'm gonna change the. To the extension to GRDGS default. Click OK. I'm gonna take off. I'm just going to use a default default cell size. And let's see what the IGOX looks like. I'll pause while that loads up. Or not my computer seems to be having a little heart attack calculating this.
Okay, so here's my IGF. So it's a bit weird around the edges. I have a feeling it's cause. We're in that long we can see if that's the case. But you can see this broad change is um. Radio IGOF, so let's try that again. I'm gonna go back here and change my ordinates to Exit 1 To check what my coordinate system is, yep. That's correct, and let's try and grid it up again. And wait. They were great. So it seems that when you couldn't turn that long. It does some weird edge boundary things, so yeah. Here's my IGRF you could now minus. So this is the IGF from my actual grid. So let's go to my grid here, oh my god. There we go. Put that down, and let's put these next to each other. And... So you can see this is my grid. Shows much more small scale features and high frequency. Shadow stuff. Where's your eye? GRF shows a very long waving signal. And so we gonna minus this from this. It's terms of. There it is. Let's see how big the IGOF is. So if I go map tools symbols. Do a horizontal color bar. And let's just locate it over here. Let's make it slightly bigger. Actually read it. And you can actually right click. Go edit this tool select or. Text attribute to make the text bigger. You can do it in other ways as well. I'm making my life difficult for myself. So you can see it extends from 27,914 to 27,915. So it's only one nanotesla. So it's quite a small variation. And it's the increasing towards the east. And so to minus this value from this value. And we would go grid and image grid mats. And so your final output file lets you gonna have to give it a name. So I'm gonna call it something that makes sense a dataset or because that's the name I've got here for my main grid. Ball. And I'm gonna say minus IGRFTF. That I know what I've done to it. And I'm gonna insert grid variables. I'm gonna say two of them. And I'm gonna put a minus between them. And so I'm gonna say G1 is equal to my data set. Just gonna search the data set all minus my Iger if. T 
TF and let's see what it looks like. Pretty much the same um, not much of a difference. Something you could do to see how different they are. So let's, this is my original data set here. This is my new one. So let's get the color scale to be linear. So you can see, if I put my mouse on the left hand side here, it gives me values at the bottom. So I'm gonna go from 24,000 at 2. Let's say 30,000. It's a 24,000. Up to 30,000 with the spacing of 100. Corrects it for us. Um, maybe we should actually go a bit higher. Let's go to 30 to 1,000. I get the it's better. So we've got about. Um, 7,000 between them, okay, okay. This gritty is gonna be slightly different, because we've minus the outs. And this large numbers. We double click on it. You can see my values are very different. It's from minus 3,500. Up to 4,500 so. You've taken out that big number. And you've also taken out the slight increase in the field. So let's see what it looks like if we go from minus 3. 5 up to 5,000 to say. Okay, and the difference in the two. Like this one being more yellow. Then this one being orange is not from the IGRF. It's just because I've got. Um, I've adjusted the color scale. So it's a bit difficult to see what they affected. Was moving such a small value, but um. At least you know that you've actually done and processed your data. So here we've removed the IGRF from our data. We can say that we're now looking at shallow bodies and shallow anomalies.